Greetings and salutations! This is the voice of Loquacious of Heard, bringing you his afterthoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 7, Episodes 25 and 26, titled Shadow Play. I heartily suggest you find and watch the episode itself, Sans Commentary, before proceeding with either this afterthoughts review or viewing my full reaction, which is hosted at the link in the description. Please support the official release. Be warned, this afterthoughts review will contain spoilers for the episode itself. With that out of the way, on to the review! It's been a fun season, and we're set to go out with a bang. Right from the get-go, we get a lore bomb dropped on us. Let's start with the Legends of Equestria. The best elements within us can spread light and virtue. And I know ponies who represent them all. Strength, bravery, healing, beauty, hope, and sorcery. So, that's Star Swirl, right? Yeah, that's Star Swirl. But it's not just the Legends of Equestria they're hitting us with. Myself and these pillars of Equestria were gathered together by another to maintain and share the light of these powerful ideals. But we soon came to believe the pony who brought us together only wanted that power for himself. Cast out and alone, this power-mad pony turned to darkness to satisfy his thirst. Transformed into a pony of shadows, he returned for revenge. Add the pony of shadows to the mix. Now there's a dark figure we've not heard of since season four. Anything else? To stop him, the pillars and I must make a brave sacrifice. But we shall leave behind a seed in hopes that one day it will grow into a force to stand against the darkness for all time. We must now face the fiend with the only plan we have. I only hope it will be enough. That's the last entry, and maybe Star Swirl's final words before he vanished. Minutes in, and this episode has certainly grabbed my attention. This is a good start. I'm always down for some equestrian history. Tying together the legends, Star Swirl, the Pony of Shadows, and referencing their collective disappearance of all of the above? Sweet! Indeed, this is an interesting enough setup that I'm willing to continue suspending disbelief about a marginal, but possibly important, point for the duration. But more on that at the end of this. So with Star Swirl's old journal in hoof, Twilight and her friends undertake a research project to discover the fate of Star Swirl and the other pillars of Equestria. They begin this task with the blessing and encouragement of both Celestia and Luna. We have fond memories of our old teacher. If you could discover what happened to him, we would be most grateful. It's good to see the show itself seems to be referencing some non-show sources and incorporating them more directly into show canon. The business of Star Swirl being the teacher for young Celestia and Luna is part of the book My Little Pony, The Journal of the Two Sisters, The Official Chronicles of Princess Celestia and Luna by Amy Heating Rogers. I recommend the book as there are some fun stories contained therein. So it's off to do some research, reading, rereading, etc. <sighs> Figure it out yet, Twilight? Uh, what did you figure out? Nothing yet, Sunburst. Hold your horses. It's only been three days of research. These sorts of questions can take months, years, even decades to answer. But then again, this is Twilight. She's probably closer to an answer than that. Actually, the breakthrough moment comes when Starlight is able to decipher Star Swirl's otherwise incomprehensible horn riding. Apparently, not only is Star Swirl's journal in Old Ponish, but it's in sloppily written Old Ponish. And while Starlight doesn't read or understand Old Ponish herself, she can make out the scribbles and offer up a probably badly mispronounced recital of the scrawl of letters. And then Twilight and Sunburst can translate the spoken words Starlight is attempting to say. I'm close to an answer. I can feel it. Herk Sylphumse Ponehenge. What's that? The Temple of Ponehenge? You can read that? The horn writing's pretty sloppy, but it's nowhere near as bad as mine. Tawar Dal Grimlik of Fola Firgenborg? 
At the base of Full Mountain. Usur Endemest Shield. <gasps> Our last stand. <sighs> well, that sure sounds like a clue to me. Indeed it does, Spike. And so our fine herder friend sets off to Ponehenge, which is a pun I heartily approve of. They find it easily enough, although it's overgrown. And as an aside, I loved the Easter egg the animators threw in here. I've never seen magical runes like these before. Those are Futhark runes. Specifically, they are the Elder Futhark. The Elder Futhark is the earliest known form of a runic alphabet and was used by northern Germanic tribes from roughly the 2nd to 8th century. As for what these runes say, they say pony rules. Seriously, those top four runes are P, O, N, and I. The bottom five runes are R, U, L, E, and S. Little touches like this are one of the many things I love about this show. But moving on. Poking around ancient stones seems to be going nowhere fast. I guess I hoped we'd get here and the mystery would just magically be explained. Twilight, your wish is the plot's command. So after witnessing an illusionary image revealing the fates of the Pillars of Equestria and the Pony of Shadows, Twilight has her answers. Star Swirl and the rest of the Pillars sacrificed themselves to save Equestria. Well then, mystery over, roll credits, and wait, what? How are we not even ten minutes into this, the first part of a two-part episode? Oh, I think we can all see where this is going. Twilight's now working on understanding the specific magic Star Swirl used to work the banishing spells. They used their magic to open a portal between worlds to Limbo and pull the Pony of Shadows inside. Darling, your diorama! I made more! Star Swirl thought the only way to trap the Pony of Shadows in Limbo was for the Pillars to take him there. So they got stuck too! The Pony of Shadows must have been really awful for them to do that. I suppose being trapped for all time with a super duper bad guy in Limbo might be okay if you were doing the Limbo? <laughs> but that's still pushing it. The thing is, I think I can get them out. Well, it's nice to see they're adding Limbo to the various extra planar realities contained within the My Little Pony canon. Stick it right alongside Tartarus in terms of surprising bits of lore. But wait a second, back up. What was that last thing Twilight said? I think I can get them out. Twilight, are you serious? You can save the most legendary ponies of all time? I don't know. Opening portals between worlds didn't work out well for me. <laughs> Are you sure it's safe? It is most definitely not safe. This is a terrible idea. Wait, unless Twilight has a specific plan for bringing the pillars back while simultaneously working powerful magic to keep the Pony of Shadows still sealed away, this could be a good plan then. But, if it's just Twilight obsessing about a chance to meet her historical idol, and thus blinding herself to the risks involved, I reiterate, bad plan, bad Twilight. Where's a rolled up newspaper to smack this young alicord on the nose with? No, this is looking more and more like obsessive Twilight going off on an enthusiastic tear. The whole rushing in where angels fear to tread deal. And she's working on a plan to pull all of the pillars out of limbo. If I'm right, we need to find items that are connected to the pillars in some way. You mean like stuff that belonged to them? How would we know what to look for? Or where? Luckily, Star Swirl took a lot of notes. My compatriots are as varied as the realm itself and hail from every corner of our land, bringing with them artifacts and talismans of great power. Um, Twilight? What are you doing? I'm not doing anything. Rock of Shovel! Flash Magnus' shield! Miss Main's flower! Meadowbrook's mask! And the blindfold Somnambula wore when she faced that nasty Sphinx! I guess we don't need to figure out who should get what. Well, applesauce. It looks like the plot device, or cutie map, is weighing in on things. So the Tree of Harmony and the very forces of harmony in the land are down with this plan? This is both reassuring and bothersome. Reassuring because thus far the tree hasn't pointed Twilight in the wrong direction. 
bothersome because this implies a major problem exists which will need fixing. A very specific kind of problem. So does this mean the rest of the finale will be dedicated to tracking down relics and end with the release of the heroes? Nope. After a short series of vignettes in which each of the main six acquire a relic, with which they are thematically linked through the whole embodying the elements of harmony thing they've had going since season one, it's time to reconvene back at Pwnhenge. That this is still only part one of a two-parter has already raised so many warning flags. And here's Starlight, being the voice of reason and caution. What's out there about saving the most legendary ponies of all time from a thousands-year-old prison? Well, nothing, when you say it like that. Unless the most legendary ponies of all time knew what they were doing, and we shouldn't mess with it. I'm sure Star Swirl and the Pillars did the best they could back then, but magic has come a long way, mostly because of the work they did. That's true, and you did get your wings from finishing one of Star Swirl's spells. Exactly. But then I messed with one and nearly destroyed the universe, so... Ah, oh, it's good to see some pony has their head in the game and isn't all swept up in the glamour and glory of bringing back legends out of time to the present day. But Starlight's worries get brushed aside. Risk? Sure, there might be some. But Twilight sees the potential reward of having all of the pillars back as being worth that risk. Twilight might be a tad biased, though. What with her whole obsession over Star Swirl the Bearded. So, it looks like they're going forward with the whole summoning thing. That's good news! Otherwise, we'd have brought this shield for nothing! I hope you don't think you're the only one to find her artifact. Because this here shovel says otherwise. Oh, Nessie, you two. Not everything is a competition. But, Miss Main's flower is by far the most attractive of the artifacts. You're just saying that because you didn't have to scuba dive in a pit of green slime to get yours. Or move a flash beehive. Good work, everyone. Let's do this. What has happened? Aripto Kaibos, Star Swirl. Let the die be cast. So, well, it did good, right? Right? What? No, 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 no! You must undo what you've done! What? Why? I mean, I don't think I can. You cannot bring us back! But I did! I brought all the pillars back! You cannot bring only the pillars back! So ends part one. Not an unexpected development, but certainly a problematic one. On the plus side, six ancient heroes of old have returned. But so too has an ancient enemy. So right now this looks like a wash? Eh, after a brief recap... <laughs> <laughs> Your pitiful attempt to imprison me has failed, Star Swirl. <laughs> You must return us to Limbo. It's the only way to stop him. I only figured out how to bring you back. Working on it. No table of contents. Allow me to assist. There. Without the power of Bonehenge, your banishing spell is useless. Well, cheese and crackers. First, I'm quite liking this villain. He's got a certain style. Of course, he fully intends to drown all of Equestria in darkness and despair, starting with the 14 ponies in front of him. How's that working out for the newly released villain, by the way? Don't fret. When I extinguish the light and hope of this miserable world, you won't remember any of this. No! This one is almost as strong as you, Starswell. 
But even in my weakened state, she cannot stop the might of shadows. Lucky for her, she's not alone. Know this, fiend. We will not rest until we find a way to return you to Limbo. Well, looks like we have the task for this second part of the finale, Well and Hoof. Find a way to banish the villain. Never! Your days of glory are through, Starswell. Now my dark power will reign, and you six will bow to me! Huh. That sounded... personal. Like, way personal. Like, long-held grudge, some pony did some pony wrong sort of personal. Odd. That isn't the sort of conflict that usually gets settled with violence in My Little Pony. Anyway, time for a team up between the pillars and the elements. It's nice to see how each of the pillars seems to bond in a most friendly fashion with their counterpart among the main six. Well, except for Twilight and Star Swirl. Senpai is not noticing Twilight, except to criticize and dismiss her, that is. It's kind of adorkable, and it's pointing towards a larger truth which the show has already alluded to in previous seasons. But anyway, it's off to do some more research. The Pony of Shadows is doubtless heading off to find dark places from which to draw power. If only there were a magical map around that could help provide directions. Oh wait, there is. Something about this magic seems familiar. Ah! Did you know he can do that? He's Star Swirl. He can do anything. This map, and indeed this very castle, are grown from the seed we planted over a thousand years ago. Then it did work. Uh, what worked? Each of us infused a crystal seed with our magic in hopes that it would grow into a force for good. We want to leave something to protect the realm in our absence, but we never dreamed our gift would become so powerful. Oh, hello, world lore. Nice to see this expressly addressed in more than just the opening recital, in case there was any doubt. Y'all mean the elements came from you? You know, the sparkly crystal things that grow from the Tree of Harmony and represent each of us? Laughter, honesty, generosity, loyalty, kindness, and magic. They are reflections of our own elements of hope, strength, beauty, bravery, healing, and sorcery. And aside, I really like the voices for the pillars. Good job all around. And speaking of some all-around jobs, it's time for preparations for the inevitable confrontation. Our foe will seek dark places from which to draw power. I will prepare my spell so that we may strike as soon as you find him. What are we waiting for? I like your spirit. Twilight's not fully sold on following Star Swirl's spell as is. After all, from the sounds of it, they'd have to use the magic of the Elements of Harmony to power the same banishment spell Star Swirl originally used, a power drain that would effectively destroy the Elements altogether and, in so doing, kill the Tree of Harmony. Pros of this plan? Pony of Shadow is returned from Limbo. Cons of this plan? All of the pillars will be lost forever, Further, all of the elements will be lost too, and the Tree of Harmony will doubtless die. So Twilight's working on a new plan. Usually, research makes Twilight happy, but she seems quite down as she's working on this vexing problem. Uh, Twilight? Are you okay? I just unleashed ultimate evil and doomed Equestria because I was obsessed with meeting my idol! Why wouldn't I be okay? Well, that sums it up nicely. In her case, it's an understandable mistake. Gotta love that hubris. But again, the fact that the Tree of Harmony has taken an interest in events and is providing aid does imply that there is ultimately a way through, and a way that leads to a better future for all. You know, Starlight's been spot on with her comments and concerns and observations throughout this finale, so her comment that... Maybe there's another way. Give that pony a cookie. Her intuition continues to work well. And what do you know, Twilight's research pays off. 
She finds a spell which could be used to open a portal to Limbo and have other powerful magical ponies, like herself and Starlight, do the pushing part. Pros of this plan. Pony of Shadows is returned to Limbo. Pillars of Equestria remain. Cons of this plan. All the elements will still be lost, and as a result, the Tree of Harmony will doubtless die. Well, it's an improvement, but... That's great, but I was thinking of another way that maybe doesn't involve banishing at all? That's so Starlight, but more on that in a minute. The explorations into the dark corners of Equestria go surprisingly brightly. Star Soul's information is over a thousand years out of date, after all, and the dark places he knew of have all been enlightened in the intervening centuries. So, no leads on locating the villain, time to regroup. Twilight shares her good news about her researches, which Star Swirl shuts down with a casual dismissal of her capabilities. But her friends rally around her, and after reluctantly taking a second, really a first, look at Twilight's proposal... Hmm, I suppose there is a chance. But we still have no idea where to find the villain! Maybe we should try there? So, more helpful pointers from the magic of Harmony, the living spirit of the land. Do you think the map could be trying to tell us where the Pony of Shadows is? Hmm. The Tree of Harmony acting to protect the light of the realm. Yes, a good thought, Twilight. Yes, Simpai finally noticed Twilight. Again, though, the intercession of the Tree of Harmony and the fact that it's calling all of the main six to the Hollow Shades again points to the possibility of there being some, well, other issues at play. As Rarity notes, the last time the cutie map called all of the main six to a single location, that was to Starlight Glimmer's village in her bad old days. Ultimately, that situation needed an intervention, but not so much a forceful banish sort of thing. I'm not as experienced as all of you, but is banishment really the only option? I mean, it's been a long time. Maybe the Pony of Shadows is ready to talk? I doubt we can save our homeland with a conversation. But we could try. Starlight, I'm sure Starswirl and the others did try. The Pony of Shadows was not interested in reconciliation. Once a villain, always a villain. Okay. That's the strongest possible hint thus far that the heroes are on the wrong track. My Little Pony isn't afraid to have some effectively irredeemable characters, both major, such as Sombra, Tyrik, and Chrysalis, and minor, such as the Flim Flam Brothers. But they also enjoy presenting situations where the ultimate resolution is accomplished through the magic of friendship, through healing and reconciliation, as was the case with Nightmare Moon, Discord, Trixie, Gilda, and, most importantly here, with Starlight herself. The feeling that something isn't quite right with the situation has been growing slowly throughout the episode, and I've really enjoyed that. We've started off with a fast-paced lore and world-building, a rush into the whole rescue the lost heroes thing, and now dealing with the fallout in terms of the, of the returned Pony of Shadows, all of which has been hitting us rapid fire but there's been a subtle wrongness underlying the otherwise straightforward, action adventure fight the bad guy tale we're watching unfold. I know Star Swirl is a great wizard, but this whole plan seems wrong. The map's only ever sent us to solve friendship problems. And there it is. While the tree and Harmony have gotten involved in affairs that were not, strictly speaking, friendship problem related, such as the whole rainbow power business back when fighting T-Rex, when the cutie map has gone into full-on plot device mode, as it is here, it has always been a matter of a broken or breaking relationship of friendship problems, situations where what is needed is usually more mending and less retribution. Maybe so, but the Pony of Shadows doesn't really seem like the friendship type. Honestly, we don't know anything about him. Let's just go ahead and award the MVP gold medal to Starlight right now and be done with it, okay? Girl's on a roll! And she's hit the nail on the head once again. What exactly do we know thus far about the Pony of Shadows? Very little, and mostly glossed over in the recitation from Star Swirl's journal at the start of the last episode. We know. 
He was once a unicorn. He brought the pillars together, forming them to a force for good in the early days of Equestria. He was one of the main ponies to help advise and guide the pillars. He then stole their artifacts for reasons unknown, but because it was suspected, though never confirmed, that his reasons were wicked ones, he was cast out of their little circle. Later he returned, filled with dark power, and transformed into the Pony of Shadows. And now he has a deeply personal vendetta against Star Swirl and the Pillars, and he's willing to destroy Equestria to get at them. So there's a lot of this unicorn story that's not really known, even his name at this time. Motive is one thing, actual plans are another. In short, there's a lot of assumptions that appear to be going on. True, the whole villainous evil shadow spirit shows that whatever he was up to, he's gotten firmly ensnared in the dark side by now. So the whole let's fight him deal is a natural initial reaction. But let's get right to one of the other undercurrents that seem to be pushing events here towards a bad end. Star Swirl is bad at friendship. That's been hinted as far back as season three. After all, the reason he could never get his Alicorn Apotheosis spell to work was that he didn't understand friendship. At least, not like Twilight did. With Twilight, he's been curt and judgy. With his fellow pillars, he's been, to put it kindly, outspoken. Or to put it less kindly, domineering. And his very black or white view of the whole hero or villain thing lacks nuance and subtlety. Nuance and subtlety that Starlight totally gets because of her own reformation from an unintentionally villainous career. Nuance and subtlety that might be at the root of this current villain's behavior. No pony does. That's not entirely true. So it's off to get the story of Stygian and his betrayal from the other five pillars. The tale that unfurls only reinforces the idea that while the events of the artifact theft looked bad, there was a rush to judgment and supposition and the growing suspicion that there might be more than just the pillars side to this story. Haven't we already had some friendship lessons about not assuming the worst about your friends? And as an aside, remember when I mentioned earlier it was good to see them bringing in non-show canon elements and making them show canon? Equestria Girls is not what I meant. I continue to loathe that, that spin-off series and prefer to ignore it as much as I possibly can. But others love it, and I'm sure the inclusion of the whole Star Swirl Banishing the Sirens thing, which is a cool bit of history in its own right and something I'm glad to see, will be a delight to them, as this effectively is what started up the Questry Girls do. <sighs> Just as long as the writers don't start making any more definite crossovers between EQG and this show, I can keep my bile in check and deal with this particular assault on my tastes. But back to this story. I'm thinking that the Pillars maybe needed to have learned that whole uh, don't assume the worst about your friends lesson back in the day. So uh, why did Stygian turn to evil? And I'm just trying to figure out why. Envy. He wanted more power than he had, and that desire led him down a path from which there is no return. I know from experience that's not always true. When the map called you six to my village, it was for a friendship problem. Are you sure this is different? I... Stygian wants to destroy all that is good in this world. There's no way to befriend a pony like that. I guess I'm lucky your idol wasn't around when you decided to be my friend. I might have been banished to Limbo, too. And there we have it. Is this a villain situation more like T-Rex or Sombra? A struggle against an implacable, unyielding foe with whom one cannot reason? Or are there other factors at play which makes this a conflict in need of a resolution more harmonious than simple banishment, imprisonment, or destruction? With the Tree of Harmony being so closely involved in pushing the main six along, signs point to actually a friendship problem as the real deal. Well, in short order, our little ponies are at the tree, where they retrieve the elements, and Star Swirl's rather callous disregard for the necessary destruction of the living spirit of the land to imprison the Pony of Shadows again points to his lack of empathy, which, along with his pride, would appear to be the pitfalls that keep him from being better at the whole friendship thing. Now, though, Twilight started to think. She's caught between her idol and her student. 
And as much as it's hard for Twilight to even conceive that Star Swirl might be very, very wrong about the situation, Starlight keeps hammering home some exceedingly good points. Time to confront the villain? Stygian, show yourself and face us! <laughs> definitely would have remembered reading about this. <laughs> Welcome to the Well of Shame. Yep, time to confront the villain. And what does Stygian have to say for himself? When you turned your backs on me, I discovered this place. The darkness spoke to me of a power beyond any I could imagine. And I listened. The Shadow and I became one. Soon, all of the realm will be the same. Then all ponies will feel the despair I did when you cast me out! We did what we had to do. You tried to steal our powers for yourself. No, it was you who were selfish. Now, you will pay! Oh yeah, definitely sounds like Star Swirl might have messed up some friendship stuff with Stygian back in the day, which set him on this dark path. Are you still sure this isn't a friendship problem? Clearly Twilight's not sure, but Star Swirl is going to rush ahead with the whole banishing plan anyway. It goes... rather well. Hole to Limbo opened? Check. Pony of Shadows being drawn towards it? Check. Indeed, it seems to be taking all of its power to keep itself from being lost into the void. So, will Twilight push him in? Is violence to be the answer to the problem posed by the existence of the Pony of Shadows? No! You will not trap me again! Twilight, push him in! Huh? There's a pony in there! <laughs> that? sudden, and just when I thought there wouldn't be any more amping up of the drama. But lost there in the darkness of the Pony of Shadows is the unicorn, Stygian. But Star Swirl says you betrayed them. You wanted their magic. No, I wanted their respect. I brought them together. I planned strategy and I read all I could about the beasts we faced. But I didn't have magic or strength, so no pony ever noticed me. I went to Ponehenge to make my own copies of the artifacts. With them, I thought I could be a pillar too, and stand by their side in battle. I never wanted to steal their power. But instead of sharing and letting me help, my friends threw me out. So I became stronger than any of them. The darkness welcomed me when no pony would, and I will do what I must to protect it. Yeah, Star Swirl, Pillars, you done goofed. This whole mess really is a friendship problem. A friendship problem which in some respects echoes the very first friendship problem we had with this show, the fall of Luna, and her becoming Nightmare Moon. What's more, through Twilight's magic, the Pillars are now aware of their mistake. So, time to try a redemption gambit? The Shadow isn't who you really are. Let me help you be Stygian again. Even if my friends did still care, what makes you think you have the power to help me? Because it's what she does. I wasn't so different from you, and Twilight helped me change. If there's one pony in Equestria that can save a friendship, it's her. I... I want to believe you. The darkness will not be stopped! Ah, <sighs> battle it is to be. But now, it seems, the Pony of Shadows is fighting one additional foe, Stygian himself. Stygian wants to be free, and now, rather than trying to force him away, a most disharmonious action, the assembled heroes turn the full force of their magic on rescuing him from the shadowy horror that has consumed him. I'd like to point out that this is the first real look at how strong the Pony of Shadows is, that dark force of pain and despair. It takes all six of the pillars, supporting all six of the elements, plus two additional unicorns, one of whom is a powerhouse in her own right, 
to barely, just barely, succeed in ripping Stygian free from his magical, emotional, and spiritual imprisonment within the Pony of Shadows. One of the fundamental concepts within the whole Conflicts Happen story, as it appears throughout My Little Pony, would seem to be save whatever you can, destroy only what you must. Salvation, redemption, is a more desirable outcome than destruction or punishment. And here, we've kind of managed both. Stygian is free, and the dark forces which empowered him, which used him, have been banished. They didn't disappear! Maybe because we used them for healing magic instead of banishing? So, once again, the forces of Equestrian Harmony managed to pull a best-case scenario victory out of what was looking to be, at best, a draw, if not an outright loss to the wicked powers of the world. Stygian is reunited with his old friends. Thank you for helping us see the errors of our ways, Twilight. It seems I never accounted for the magic of friendship. Thank you, Swirl Star. Uh, Star Swirl. <clears throat> so, apparently a conversation can save Equestria? Crisis resolved, and point Starlight, like she needed any more points this finale. So now, Pony of Shadows vanished, Stygian saved, all of the pillars freed and once again active in Equestria, and the elements of Harmony are still in play. Yep. I'm thinking Season 8 has all sorts of fun additional story fodder available for it. As for Star Swirl and the other pillars, it's off to meet Celestia and to decide what they shall do. I'm not certain Cantalot is where I belong. The realm has grown and I believe I'll have a look around before I settle in any one place. And I long to see what has become of my home. I believe we all do. Then I hope you will return to Canterlot on occasion and share the wisdom of your great experience with the next generation of ponies. We would be honored, but if it is wisdom you seek, look no further than your own pupil. She showed me that the power of friendship is a magical force indeed. And as for Twilight, she's learned something personally valuable out of this experience. It's funny. I thought meeting my idol would give me all the answers I ever wanted, but instead, I forgot what I already knew. Good thing I had a student of my own to remind me. Ah, so sweet. And so very, well, pony. And as those Futhark runes earlier remind us, pony rules. I felt this story was a fitting end of the season and a very good addition to the show as a whole. I liked it. Even if, as I alluded to before, I had a little issue with the pillars. That issue? rant and coming. Well, I'm something of a student of history, all quite amateurish, I assure you, but it is an area that interests me. So let's break down the only big issue I had with the whole deal. How the heck were all the pillars working together? From what we heard of Sinambula, her origin story should be placing her squarely in the pony equivalent of Pharaonic Egypt. For comparison, in our own world, the time frame of Pharaonic Egypt ran from roughly 2700 BC until roughly 300 BC. Then we've got Flash Magnus. His origin story should be placing him squarely in the pony equivalent of either the Roman Republic or Imperial Rome. So from roughly 500 BC to roughly 480 AD. So there is the faintest possibility that Magnus and Sinambula might have known each other. But then there's Rockhoof. Dude's got the whole Viking warrior thing going on. The age of the Vikings lasted from roughly 800 AD until around 1000 AD. Star Swirl is a Merlin-esque figure, so it would be reasonable to assign him a quasi-Arthurian time frame for his own origins, so that would be in the early to mid 500s AD? Now, when looking at Mistmain, you're talking about a vast swath of East Asian history that could potentially work for her origin culture. However, fun fact, the design of her frenemy, Sable Spirit, is modeled directly off of the Empress Dowager uh, Chizi, who reigned from 1861 AD until 1908 AD. And lastly, we have Meadowbrook, 
Her mask is quite reminiscent of the whole Plague Doctor getup invented by Charles de Lorme in 1620, but her culture is clearly Cajun Creole as found in the southern portions of North America near the Gulf of Mexico. So that's 1800s AD through 1900s AD. All this lore with the pillars, how they knew one another and worked together, it's awesome. It's awesome in the same way that a picture of Abraham Lincoln riding a dinosaur, wielding a laser gun, and leading a host of cavemen against Nazi robots would be awesome. But none of these things belong together. So how is it that pony heroes, who, assuming a roughly similar to our own temporal cultural evolution throughout Equestria's history, by rights should have died centuries apart from one another, with a few possible exceptions of two of them maybe overlapping here or there, actually worked together? Well, Starswell does apparently have a mastery of time magic, but Starswell isn't the pony who assembled these Avengers, er, er, pillars. It was Stygian who assembled the pillars, and Stygian, it was firmly established, is no great shakes in the magic department. Certainly not pull legendary heroes centuries out of time to work together powerful. Still, Starswell may have done something to pull such temporally diverse cast of heroes together. That would be one explanation, but it stretches my own credulity beyond the bounds I'm comfortable with. I find it difficult to believe. I think a likelier explanation is that I'm way overthinking this, as usual. This is a magical land of pastel equines. So what if there are isolated cultures which, in our own world, existed millennia apart that are all contemporaneous here? It makes for fun, awesome stories, so shoot! Let's just soothe my inner history buff self with a eh, fantasy adventure cartoons. Gotta expect some liberties, right? I find that's good enough for me. Like I said, this particular nit which I've been picking at doesn't really hamper my enjoyment of the story being told. And boy, did I enjoy this story. If you wish to see my full reaction to the Season 7 finale of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Episodes 25 and 26, titled Shadow Play, the link, as I mentioned earlier, is in the description. Feel free to leave any comments or likes for that reaction here on this Afterthoughts review. And until next time, as always, kindly remember, y'all are awesome, stay awesome.